Hello, welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Delighted to be joined by Celtic slash Dunfermline and Ireland under 21 striker Jonathan Afalabi. Jonathan, how are you keeping under this pandemic and the lockdown and everything else? How have you been coping? Yeah, I've, I've had better days, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I know we've been taking over well over here. We have a, a little app to keep us going. Um, it's an app called Strava. It just tracks how, how we are running and everything that you're doing just to keep up to date and keep you fresh for a long old break. And um, are you on a, a strict regime uh, to, to go with that? Uh, no, it's basically just down to ourselves. Um, just keeping... Just keeping in track with um, everything we're supposed to do, we get given things to do, so it's, it's strict enough. And uh, yeah, we have to do it every day basically. We just get one or two days rest from running. Okay, okay. Well, I have you on on here, um, and I wanted to kind of get a, a background to kind of how you got to where you are now. So, do you want to talk me through, um, I suppose, when you first started getting into football, what was your, your big influence uh, behind getting? A ball out, I suppose, and, and playing. Yeah, so I would have started at around the age of seven, I think. Um, I would have been playing with my older brother. We played for our local team together. I wasn't really a massive fan of football before that, I would say. Um, I used to watch Chelsea play with my dad, and it kind of just got me into it, just liking to see the different types of players. Like The players at the time would have been uh, a lot of, like around Mourinho's first era for um, Chelsea, so... I got watching them and I joined my brother's team, that was the local team, Mark Celtic. Um, started off as a centre half. It was just it was just something that I just did. I just joined in with my brother and uh, it ended up going really well, yeah. And so so who was the when you were watching Chelsea under Mourinho, was it back then they had drug by Robin? Damien Duff, I suppose, was Damien Duff. I yeah. suppose he's with you now at at, at uh, Celtic. So um was he a big influence? Yeah, or yeah. Uh, someone who you looked up to. Yeah, he would have been one of them. And the front three at the time, I think. I think Ian Robin was there as well from that ended up Bayern Munich. So it would have been him. Uh, I think Joe Cole, Drogba, and Damien Duff, as you said, the earlier times. And uh, it was good to see what they were like. Cause they were all like uh, foreign players, would say, for playing in London for Chelsea. So it was good to see them all play. Um, they were a really good team together and it kind of just got me wanting to play further up the field, just seeing the way they were playing and especially Didier Jogba, he'd be one of my like bigger bigger um, people that I look up to in football, so it was it was good to see players like them play. Yeah, so talk to me from the transition then from centre back up the field. Did you were you move straight to striker straight away or was it a gradual progression you were moved in and out or was it centre back, striker? Yeah, yeah, it was a gra it was it was more or less gradual. It was a it was a bit of a weird one, I'd say, because um, I, when I was playing with my brother's team, it was just sent to half because it was kind of like a Sunday league kickabout type thing. So I wasn't like dead serious, but it was a league, so you'd have to. I was playing with lads that were four years older than me at the time, and um, I didn't really play the small the small uh, nine aside pitches. So I just went straight into the big eleven aside. So I kind of had an advantage when I, I moved on to Shamrock Rovers after that, and uh, I think I was about. Uh, about 10, 11 years old. So I was back down with my own age group then, playing with people my own age. And uh, I, was, I was a bit like bigger than everyone and quicker. So uh, I had the experience of playing with older people and getting kicked about. So when I went back down to play with my own age group, it was a lot easier. Like um, just in terms of like physicality and thinking ahead, um, I'd say it helped me a lot. So I, I went into midfield when I went to Shamrock Rovers and uh, scored a couple of goals there, I think. So it would, it would have just made sense to just put me up top and uh, carry that goal-scoring record up at a young age. So it was really good. And so at uh, Shamrock Rovers then, was that when you kind of discovered that you were, I suppose, how do I say it without giving you a big head, uh, better than better than most people uh, at, the, at the club? No, uh, I never really looked at it like that at the time because I was just playing football because I just loved the game. And, uh, it was just a love of the game that just kept me going and scoring goals. So, um, yeah, it was good at the time. I uh, had me on fair share compliments back then as well. I think uh, I think one, one of the games we played against Temple Oak was just like a local game. Shamrock Rovers against Temple Oak. And 
Uh, we won, I think it was six or seven nil at the time. I can't really remember, but uh, I scored all all six or seven goals that we that we scored. And uh, after the match, I had to bring my birth certificate because the the gaffer of the other team didn't didn't believe I was the eleven years old at the time. So I had to go back to my gaff and get my birth cert. And my dad brought it back up just to clear everything up before the game got officially like blown up. So. Uh, would you get that much, or, or was that that just that one game? No, nah, it was just the one game. I think it was more or less the fact that I was bigger at the time. I think I grown up, like I grew a bit too quick. Like uh, I looked about fifteen at the age of eleven, kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, I was a pretty big lad, and I managed to score that many goals in one game. So, I don't think it would have looked good in the terms of development, if you like. So. Uh, yeah, I just uh, had to go get my birth certificate. It was a bit of a weird one. I've never been in that situation. But, um, yeah, after that, I carried on uh, my, uh, my footballing career at an early stage. I went to Lourdes Celtic in Crumlin. And um, that's where I more or less kind of came to me that I, that I thought I could have been like a, a very good player or I could have tried to go elsewhere on my footballing game. Um, I started there with Darren Kelly. He was, uh, he was my, my main manager at the time. Uh, he was one of the people that really helped me with football in, in an early career, uh, in my early stages of my career even. Um, he really helped me with like finishing and stuff like that and getting into smart areas and uh, trying to learn ahead of me time, if you'd like. So it um, really helped me with that. Uh, we we would have been that mid-table team to try steal points off like the likes of St. Kevin's and Joey's and that home farm. So we were uh, a decent side. Uh, we all moved on after that. We were being like age 14 or 15, that's when I went to Joey's and uh, interest from abroad obviously came in and it was just a big a, a big uh, surprise for me really at the time when I was uh, delighted with the way it was going. So it was, uh, it was a big turn in my career at that, that point when I went to St. Joey's. So talk to me about uh, the progress from Joey's, uh, how you got on there and then obviously inevitably how you got to England. Yeah, so uh, in my first season with Joey's, I don't think I played a lot. Um, coming from Lord Celtic, it would have been just, um, in terms of progression, there were already good players at, at St. Joey's, like Glenn, like the likes of like Glenn McCauley and other forwards like that at the time that were really good, Dylan Turner. So I had to kind of make my way into the starting 11. Um, I think a couple of injuries got me in there in the end, but once I started playing, I just started getting my goal, my goal scoring form back and... Uh, it just it just kept going up from there really. I think towards the end uh, of my time there, we won a couple of cups, about six, and we could never win the league cup, which was our bogey uh, tournament, if you like. We always lost a home farm away, uh, penalty shootouts, ninety minutes, like we, we just never beat them. But like in everything else, we 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 more or less win every game without any problems. But um, yeah, so I got a trial for Southampton. Um, at the age of 16, which was a big, a big, um, big time for me in my career, it was a uh, very surprising. I think the scout that was there at the time, he, he was I knew him off football as well because he worked in my school part time. So I kind of like kissed his ass if you like a bit, but it didn't work in the early stages. And he always told me like I had a lot to work on and stuff like that. So it just gave me a little motivational, if you like, motivational uh, G up to go out and train more and just get the ball and knock it against the wall and get me touch better and stuff like that. And um, it really helped in the end. So I could go in every Monday morning in school asking him how I played. And it just got better and better. And before you know it, he just couldn't turn me down. So uh, that, that would be a big part of my career that, that I'd look back to and always be appreciative for what happened. Um, would you look back the fact that he, I suppose... A lot of players are given stuff too soon. I suppose in that scenario, you weren't at all. You had to work for it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Sometimes people get a bit easy, say, if they're, if they're already at the club or they've grown up there. Uh, but being from Ireland, like you'd have to try and work for everything you want to get in football. So it's very tough trying to get over to England. But I'm sure once the opportunity comes for anyone, they take it with both hands and um, work as hard as possible to stay there. 100%. Um, what were the... The thoughts of your parents going over at the age of sixteen. What were they thinking? Was it were they positive about it? Were they worried? You know, naturally, parents are going to be worried about their yeah. child going over as a kid. I suppose. 
Yeah, no, I'd say my parents were delighted to get me out of the house at that age. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think I was a bit of a wreck to head at the time. I never liked doing anything, but apart from play football and break things, but um, yeah, it was it was very it was a very big moment for the family. I think they were all delighted for me at the time. Uh, it was it was a big thing for me as well, not finishing school. So I was delighted with that. Um, wasn't really great any subjects, so uh, football trying to uh, football kind of brought me to a better. Better career if you like. I'd rather work for that than try to do something I don't feel like I'm good at. But um, yeah, I was delighted to move over at the age of 16. My first year at Southampton, it was a bit tough. Um, there weren't many Irish lads with me at the time. There was Arnold Driscoll that was there. He signed the season that I did, but he was a year above, so we didn't really see much of each other unless we were like, because uh, the dressing rooms were separate in Southampton. You'd, uh, you'd have the first year scholars in one room and then the second year in one room, so you couldn't really speak much. And, it was my first year, my digs and all, it was, it was a bit, it, it wasn't something that I'd be used to because I was used to growing up eating things that were like, my parents are from Nigeria obviously, so I'd be used to different types of food that I'd be getting fed, so my first year was a bit tough, um, had to get a bit bigger in the gym and all because in Ireland what you wouldn't have gym at your disposal all the time, so uh, everything was a bit different, but I had to get used to it. And uh, in the end, I finally got there after my first year. I think I made me under 21s at the time. It was my under 21s debut, and I managed to score against Arsenal. So that was a big thing for me at the age of 17, I think. And it just kind of went uphill from there. I was, I was loving my time there. It was a great place. So how 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 did you kind of deal with the adversity of? You know, you're you're a young lad. You're in a, a, a different country on your own, essentially. Um, you know, other people with a le with a uh, I suppose a less strong mindset probably would have would have been back. So, how did you manage to um, I suppose grind it out? Yeah, no, I always kind of when I was playing football, it was always a thing of trying to trying to see what could keep me going. And um, one of the things was like I just didn't want to kind of like be a waste or everything I've done in the past to be a waste so to always just keep digging in and finding something to improve on or something that could help me in the future or something that could help me in the present but I'd always keep pushing and make sure I'd be the one to try to get picked even though it'd be a different situation say for if you're looking age wise you'd want to go for someone a manager would normally go for someone more experienced but I try and work as hard as I can to get in the manager's eye lines or so he can't really disregard me early and try keep me on board. Yeah, well, that's something we will get to uh, with Celtic as well uh, later on. But um, so uh, you you mentioned there about you know kind of there wasn't that many Irish influence. I know your friends with Will Smallbone, uh, Michael Obafemi, right in saying that your friends with both of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Seamus Kyo, is he there? Uh, he's a is he our mate as well? Yeah, yeah, he's a little, he, he'd he been a younger at the time. I think he was a first-year scholar when I was uh, my first-year pro. Would you have looked after him when he came over? Uh, no, not as much as I'd like to, I'd say, but I think Arnold Driscoll must have done that. Or, uh, Cameron Ledger, he, he would have looked after him. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, t tell me about, uh, at, what, at what stage, how many years were you at Southampton before you left Southampton? I was there for four years, if you include the year I was flying back and forth from, from Ireland. Okay, so talk me through through that and then kind of the reason why you, you left Southampton. Yeah, so um, I, w I was playing, uh, I would have been a first year pro at the time. Um, I only signed a two year scholar and one year pro, and then the last year uh, I got injured, so I was out for a while and I was pushing for like. At the time, they were really restricted with first team strikers, and and then I got injured, and it was a bit difficult trying to come back from that injury because it was like a, I think a grade two or a grade three tear in my groin, so I was out for the first half of the season basically. Uh, I was back around the end of November, start of December time, so there's not really much, uh, many games to play before Christmas. And uh, coming up to January, I basically got my decision there and they just said, basically, uh, they may not be renewing me deal. And this is when interest were coming in at the time. So I, I could have probably left in January, but I stuck to my guns at the time. I just thought, like, I'll just walk through this rough patch and hopefully get out of it. But uh, I got a couple of goals 
thought that would have helped, but it was just at the end of the day their decision. But so it was my con I was still in contract at the time. It was gone. It was ended up in summer, and that's when the uh, European Championships came in. Then, so it was just a it was just a matter of me just trying to play my best at the tournament. Um, and that that would that that's another big turning point for me in my career. Um, I would have looked back to that one in the many years to come. Hopefully, just just knowing that I'd, I'd done what I could have done in the time to improve myself and my career. Yeah, you did both because I think a lot of people stood up and took notice of who you actually were then, uh, maybe more so people in Ireland um, and maybe more so people from other clubs because I know you had interest other than Celtic. Yeah, yeah. at the time I would have had um, a couple of teams to be able to pick from. Uh, obviously grateful for all for all that was happening at the time, but um, before that tournament, I'd have to give a big shout out to Shamrock Rovers for taking me in during the summer and they looked after me really well. They had me staying fit. I was training with players like Jack Ford and uh, Aaron McInniff and Aaron Gray and Greg Boulder, players like that. It was great to be able to play with them. I just thought it, like, I think, uh, I'm not sure who really saw it out, but when I went there, they all really took me in. Like, they done loads of finishing with me and they knew I was going off in a couple of weeks. So um, I was always doing things to keep me ticking and, it was a, it was a great standard of football there in, in the league of Ireland. Like uh, hats off to Shamrock Rovers for what they're doing, and like I uh, wish them the best for uh, probably the end of the season for when they're trying to go for their titles and stuff. But it was a great pleasure and a great experience to be training with them week in week out, and I managed to reap my rewards then in the European Championships in Armenia. Uh, we done really well to get to the semi finals. We had a we were missing many players obviously, but. Um, it was a great achievement to get to the semi-finals the way we did, and I was glad to be able to to be able to help with like goals and stuff like that. I was just really delighted with the way everyone played. It was a great performance from every man that went out there. Yeah, you mentioned Shamrock Rovers there, and a teammate of yours, uh, Brandon Cavan, at the time was obviously playing with would have been playing with Rovers and yourself. So did you find that helped as well? Because you seemed to strike up a decent partnership in that tournament too. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I played with Brandon back when I was playing with Joey's. He would have been the the number 10 behind me at the time. Um, before that, we would have played against each other at the time because he was playing for Crumlin and I was playing for Lord. So it would have been uh, a local derby, if you like. But uh, Crumlin would have won that one more time than not. Um, but now, nah, me, and, me and Brandon managed to play with each other at Joey's. It was really good. Like We always linked up really well. And you know, he assisted probably good 70% or 80% of my goals that I scored there. So it was always going to be good memories flying out with him out to Armenia. And um, yeah, no, we done really well. As I said before, we done we done really well. Uh, the whole group did. We all stayed together and we managed to get a semi-final. So it was great. Yeah, well, I know another player who was playing with you in that tournament and you both ended up at Celtic then was uh, Leo Connor. So was that something you supposed to discuss before you joined? Because uh, I imagine you'd be close enough. Nah, no, we wouldn't. We didn't have any clue at the time that we'd end up playing for the same team. There was no. Um, I didn't even know I'd be a Celtic at that time because I, did, I didn't. There was no interest why we were out there. It was all just everyone was just concentrating on playing football and doing the best we could. Um, but now nah, after the tournament, that's when. I think it was a 21s tournament actually when when we found out Lee was going to sign for Celtic and um, we all just refreshing our phones and just waiting for him to see just to see his name in the Celtic on the Celtic Instagram page that's, that was the way we were waiting for him but uh, we kind of knew before a couple of days before he was going to sign for Celtic and uh, I signed a week or two before that I think yeah well that you know um it obviously helps. There's a, there's a strong Irish contingent now there, even with, with Damien Duff as a coach as well uh, at Celtic. Then you have Johnny Hayes and uh, Lee and then obviously Luca as well. So you have a, it's good that you have that um, Irish connection as well because I think Celtic went a little bit away from it, having that Irish connection, I suppose, whereas now there's you know three or four lads coming through there. Gives, uh, it gives Ireland even more eyes back on Celtic, which is what I think is needed. Yeah, definitely. It's only it's only positive, really, when you hear things like that. Because um, obviously, back in history, it would have Ireland and Glasgow would have um, tied up together in Celtic. So it was uh, it's really it's really positive. I can only say it's uh, it's only a good thing that we're all there together, and uh, hopefully, we can all 
grow together and try to push into that first team. So it would it would be good to be able to see that in the future and be able to hold their heads high for Ireland and for Celtic. Um, yeah, love that. Um, so tell me, you're you're obviously at the start of the season. I remember talking to you with the twenty ones. Uh, I think it was the Italy game, and you you'd gotten injured. Uh, how frustrating has it been for yourself at Celtic so far? Not not down to the club. I mean, down to your injuries. Yeah, yeah. There's only there's not much you can do when it comes down to an injury like the way I did. Um, I think it was a hamstring injury. I felt it going. Um, the warm up that we went out, we done our first training session out with Ireland, um, getting preparing for. I think it was the game against Italy, was it? Italy at home. Yeah. And we were just training, and I just felt it go. But I didn't think it was that bad because it didn't feel bad at the time. So I kept training, and that obviously would have made it worse. So by the time we had the scan, it was uh, more or less that stone that I done my hamstring basically. So uh, I had to sit that couple months out. And just uh, try to get myself stronger for the return. Yeah, so just before we move on to Dunfermline, I wanted to talk to you about kind of Neil Lennon and you know the influences of, around Celtic. What's I suppose a lot of Celtic fans be watching this and wondering kind of what he's like on a day to day basis. And myself personally, I'd like to, I'd love to know what uh, Damien Duff is like as a coach. I grew up idolising him, so I'd love to know what he's like as a coach as well. So firstly, Neil Lennon and and Demi Duff, please. Yeah, so the first day I signed, I watched Celtic play against Dunfermline. Um, that was the day I signed. I was sat in the stands for that. And before the game started, um, the gaffer came in with um, Duffer and they both spoke to me, just letting me know what I was getting into, basically. And that I'd definitely be, like, I'd, I'd have a good time there and I'd be on the cusp of the first team. So it was good to hear things like that. I can only work harder now just to try getting the get into the squad type thing for next season so um yeah so i met the gaffer he was really good um really stern as well he, he he's, he's very good at trying to teach what he's trying to impose on the game so you can only be grateful and just listen to him basically and um, i spoke to him as well before i went out on loan and he just told me um just to keep working and that I'm, I'm not far off base and i'm nearly there so i can only take words of encouragement out of that and keep working so um Duffer as well. Duffer is great. When he came in, he was he was delighted to have another Irishman in the team. Um, he was he was buzzing really because I think he's from Crumlin, is it? I think he's from. Um, so. Raf Arnhem. Raf Arnhem. All right. Yeah. yeah. There, there, he, he, down near me because he oh. went to the same school as me. Yeah, yeah. So I spoke to him as well, and he was he was really happy. Um, he joins in the session still as well, so he still has a bit in them legs. So it's good to see that and um, be able to learn off him as well. He was a great winger in his time and uh, yeah it's, it's it's really good it's uh, only positive people like uh, a good place to learn and everything's really positive so it's good there uh, yeah yeah so talk talk to me about some of your teammates uh, Scott Brown and, and Lee Griffiths as I know you're you're good mates with Lee Griffiths he seems like quite the character great to see him in, in good health as well and good mental health by the way yeah, yeah, Lee's a great lad. Um, he came down to train with the reserves a couple of times to keep his fitness levels up. Um, and he, like, he, he's already been really good to me and the lads that were there. And we do finishing together. Um, we had a little competition as well during the season to see who could score more goals in, um, in a little finishing drill at the end of training. And I, I backed myself. Like I, thought, I took out my, what boots? I think my T90s, I took out my old boots out and I was proper pumping myself up and uh only to go out and lose like nine eight i think it was so we kind of just scraped the win so uh yeah it's little things like that, that keep going so it's really good to have people like that to learn of uh, you see we, we always have a little laugh when we see each other and stuff so and he's, he's very good for motivational purposes too he comes to watch reserves games and uh i'm sure like bruni does as well he does that scott brown he comes to watch our games when we played at the start of the year and uh like he gives you little tips, um, Lee Griffiths. Like when I was coming off at half time, um, we were going back into the dressing room. He was just telling me little things I could have done that he was seeing on the sideline. Like there's always ways to improve and stuff. So it's good to be able to learn from players like him. Uh, like he's 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 done most. Like he's done a lot in his career. Like he scored them two free kicks against England, and uh, he's played for Wolves. So uh, he's he's a good player to be able to learn from, definitely. Yeah, well, they, they both are. 
Um, yeah, I, I was over for my first two Celtic games this season. Um, what I know straight away, uh, the first game was the flag day and the second time was uh, Lazio uh, at home. And the atmosphere is unreal. Like, best atmosphere I've ever experienced. And I've been to a lot of football games. Um, how much are you looking forward to, I will, and we'll come to Dunfermline soon, but how much are you looking forward to playing in front of that crowd on those type of nights? Yeah, it's only something you can just dream of and just keep working towards because it's it's something that you can just look at and just always have to be able to just keep keep your working and keep trying to improve every day, week in, week out. Because at the end of the day, it's what you do on the pitch that's going to get you to where you want to be. And um, like seeing the stadium, um, it's it's unbelievable. Really, the fans are great. Like even on social media and stuff, they always greet you. They're always staying in contact and stuff so it's always good to be to have a close relationship with the fans and uh, you can only just stream of playing there one day and hopefully i'll just be able to walk my way in there yeah well i'm going to come back to a little bit about Celtic at the end but i wanted to talk to you Dunfermline, the loan move how it came about because you were scoring goals and then straight away after you were getting a, hitting a bit of form straight away uh, the virus comes in and just puts a halt to everything you must be going mad uh, pulling your hair out yeah, it was it was a weird one. Um, it was a weird one, definitely. It was just something that you just didn't think would happen, but now it's happened, and every the streets are empty. Everything's empty. Everyone's trying to stay away from each other, and um, it's, it just is what it is at the moment. Um, we can only just stay in together, and as we as we see on social media, just support each other and just just get get past this really it might take a while like nobody knows how long it may take but we can only just play our own part and stay indoors but um, at Dunfermline it's been great um, it, first team football is what I've been dying to get and they they, they were able to give it to me because at the time I could have went back down south to, to play football there but you had to look at what would benefit you at the time and I thought Dunferm, the move to Dunfermline just suited me down to a tee basically um, when I went there, like there, there's great players there as well. There's a there's a striker that I play with, Kevin Nisbet. That he's he's stats. I think his stats are, I think, twenty six goals in about twenty nine games. Like he's there, he's doing very well for himself. And there's players there that play for Dundee in the past. And like there, there, there's a lot of great players there. Like the standards good. And um, yeah, so we played our four. I made my debut against Queen in the South and uh, got me for, I got an assist there. I hit the crossbar and someone just tapped it in. So I think I grabbed that one for an assist. Um, the fans are great. Why not? They're really tight to you there. Um, uh, we played, I think I got my first goal against Dundee United. They came up to East End Park and we beat them 2-0. And uh, I, I managed to get my first goal there. So then I grabbed another goal after that. So I was trying to, I was finding a bit of form, as you said. Um, it was only good. I was loving it there. Like the guy for uh, Stevie Crawford, he used to play for Dunfermline, and I think he played for Millwall as well back in this. In uh, oh, I recognise his name, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a he's a great striker as well. I used to, he speaks to me a lot, gives me little tips, and uh, he he showed faith to me as well to play me in all the games that um, were available to me so far. So yeah, it was a bit of a weird one. Um, the virus coming about this time I was just hitting form but it is where it is you can only just use this period to improve myself even more yeah well that's what I was going to say to you like um, the likelihood and uh, you know nobody can, can guarantee anything but the likelihood is that you know I don't think any more games we played this season if they are I don't see them play till at least June the the playoffs with Ireland were, were pushed back as well so it, it, it's um, it's obviously worrying times in the actual world but in terms of football as well um, but if we're talking about Celtic maybe next season um, what or, or beyond that what are your goals um, for Celtic I imagine you want to break it to the first team yeah definitely that's the that's the main goal for me to get into Celtic's first team. Uh, I know they're doing very well at the moment. Uh, they've got great and exceptional players like Hudson Edward and uh, James Forrest, Brian Chris, like people like that. There's endless names, and um, all I can do is just try and improve myself to the max and get in that preseason and show where I should be in that team. So um, yeah, that's basically what I'm going to do. Really, just walk my socks off basically and try and get into that team and make it hard for the gaff to make decisions which is why every player should be down so yeah so Alton Edward um, you know 
you mentioned him there, and I think he's absolutely quality. Has he helped you in any way, maybe uh, finishing or anything like that? Does he give you much tips or anything like that? Uh, there's not much speaking between us on the pitch at the time when we were training together and um, the first couple of weeks, months. Um, but you can only just watching it, just admire what he's doing. Like you can just you can just see him pick up the ball and just dribble past people like they're not even there. So it's, it's good to be able to see that. Um, like he, when they watch him on telly, you just know he's going to score every time, basically. And they're they're the standards you have to hit if you want to be if you want to be challenging for a position. So um, yeah, it's it's great to be able to see things like that up here. Um, He's a great striker, and all you can do is just just try and get as far as possible to try and be like him, or just replicate what he does, but in your own way. Yeah, one hundred percent. And it sounds like from from what you're telling me, it sounds like you're you're basically going to go back to your old mindset of I'm going to work through the hard parts, try and get myself into the first team and score goals. Um, and it sounds like you have a good infrastructure around you there with the the likes of Duffer. Um, uh, Lee Griffiths and these types of people who are only trying to help you get yeah. to where the level that you want to get to. So it sounds fantastic, and I'm glad that everything is going so well, bar this pandemic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, that's definitely what it is. It should be. It should be like that for every player. There shouldn't be no real rest period unless you're off season. Um, but you should always be looking to looking at who's ahead of you and looking who's behind you and try and get get as far away as possible from the person behind you and get closer to the one ahead of you. Um, and then that can only just make you a better player. Um, but that's definitely the aim, just to try and get in the squad next year and just have me name in and around the team. Well, that's that's brilliant, John. Um, I'm going to leave it there. i just say thanks very much for your time. It's been a great chat. Um, you know, Obviously, at this time, it's good for people to keep active and whatever. So it's nice of you to give up your time and have a chat here. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Um, anyone watching, uh, make sure you give it a like, make sure you give it a share, and make sure you give it a subscribe. And make sure go follow Jonathan. You can see his social media handles right there underneath. It. Go follow him. Huge thanks again, Jonathan. Right, nice one. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Anytime.